Hello everybody, welcome back to Stone Magpie. You may well recognise this picture if you've watched um, my how to create a chart video. I'm going to put the link in the description below because this video kind of links in with it. Um, every time I look at the picture that I did, I think how amazing it would look as a 3D decoupage. Um, so I'm going to bite the bullet and take this out of the frame and try and redo it as a 3D picture. I'm not sure if it'll work, it's a bit of an experiment, um, but I thought if I recorded myself doing it, it might well inspire the advanced diamond painters to have a go. Um, so keep fingers crossed that it works and I don't spoil my picture, but you know, worst case, I'll just reprint it and diamond paint again. Um, now, because I've already diamond painted this whole picture, I'm thinking of cutting around the diamonds and putting it onto different layers, just to save my time um, diamond painting it from scratch again. So what I've done so far is I've printed out some different layers. Um, I've got the first page here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Um, and what I've done, I've worked out what layers I would like. If you've ever done card making, you've probably done 3D decoupage before um, where you build up the 3D image. So I'm thinking layer one is the base and on the base, I'm going to do the sky and the sun. So that's the first layer. Then I've printed out all the different layers. So I've got exactly the same chart printed six times. Okay. Um, so the first layer is going to be the sky and the sun. The second layer is going to be the tree. The third layer is going to be where the feathers are. Fourth layer is the girl. Fifth layer is the sword and the cape and the arms and just some of the finer details. And then the sixth layer is going to be this tree around to frame it. So hopefully you'll see the depth of it. Um, now, another thought I had was how am I going to actually film this for you to, to watch? Um, and I think what I'm going to do is film anything that you might need to know as we go along but otherwise it'll probably be sped up so that you don't have to watch me actually um, cutting around all of the detail with my craft knife. Um, I'll do a little bit of it and speed it up. So we'll see how it works. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous about starting it, um, but this idea just will not leave me alone. So I've got to have a go. Right, I will stop there and get myself prepared and I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we've got the picture out of the frame and on a cutting mat. So um, what I'm gonna do is try and start cutting out around the sky to take that piece out, ready to glue onto my other base layer one. So let's see if it's going to work or not. Um, I'm just taking my sharp craft knife and working down the diamonds and around. This is going to take quite a while. It's probably going to lift some of them off as well. So it's not ideal. I think um, I may end up having to take them off and reposition them. Let's see, it's probably as quick. <laughs> so I think if you were doing your own 3D project, you'd um, you'd want to do your sticky surface and then put them on rather than doing it this way, but. As it was an afterthought, I'm going with it. Let's see, 
very small these. We don't have to be exact on because this layer will go over the top. Whoops. Just get my Come on, stick stick back in rather than on my finger if you don't mind. Thank you. is quite tricky. Oh. Sorry. Here we go. I've got my blade fitted properly again. I'm pressing quite hard. It's just loosening in a little bit, but I'll be careful. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have to see if this works because there's a lot of area to do. If it's going to be a bit of a pain, I'll look on the back, see if I've actually cut through. Mm. Very lightly. Okay, I'm going to pause and have a rethink. Hello. Right, I've had a ponder. I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to start cutting out the, the layers instead while I think about how I'm going to do the diamond painting. So, base layer one is going to stay complete because this is going be the base. <laughs> um, so this is what it's going to be built on the top of. So we'll put base one aside and then we go to number two. Now what I've also noticed is that the symbols are slightly different on, from base one but I don't think it'll matter um, because we're just diamond painting on each layer. So with this one I need to cut out the sky pieces. So I'm going to use the picture here to know where I'm cutting. So for base two, we'll need to cut around where the sky will be. So we're taking out all of the turquoise pieces so that they show through from base one. And that's how you get your 3D view. Like I say, if you've done card making before, you'll have probably done decoupage. Nearly there. Now I'm not going to do all the little scrappy bits, I'm just doing the main pieces and that's because the over, overall view would hopefully be right without having to go into so much intricate detail. So I think you get the gist of what I'm doing here. Um, so what I'll do, I'll change the camera angle so that I can see properly and I will speed it up.
Hi everyone. Okay, so I've spent some time now cutting out the different layers. So this is the base layer. So as you can see, it is all complete. Um, I've still not received my glue, so I can't start this yet. But when I do, I'll be filling in all of the turquoise sky and the sun on this layer. Um, on the second layer, hopefully you can see this, I've cut out the trees. And so once that's got the foam pads on the back, it will hopefully stand out a little bit against. And on this layer, I will be doing those trees there. And then on the next layer, layer three, hopefully you'll be able to see this as well. I've cut out all of the trees, ready to layer that on top. And on this layer, I'll be doing all of the peacock feathers in the background here. Okay, and that will sit on top of there again on the pads to lift it up a little bit. Um, on the next layer, it's quite floppy because I've cut out all of the peacock feathers on this one. If you can see that clearly. There we go. And so that will sit on the top. And on this layer, I'll be doing the Justice Lady here. Okay. And then on the next layer, um, what I've done, I haven't cut out the next layer yet. And that is because once I've done the lady, I'm going to pick out some minor details on here to stand up even further. So I'll be doing her forearms. I'll be doing the sword just to put those more in the um, in the 3D. I might do the scales as well, but they might be quite fiddly, being quite narrow. Anyway, we'll see. Um, and when I cut out layer... Oh, it was the final layer, actually. I was left with the inside of the final layer. So again, I can pick out a few more details of that one. Um, oh, and I'll be doing the, the sky at the top here on this layer as well because on the final layer, we've got the frame itself. So as you can see, I've cut out again the trees and that will sit on the top there. So each layer will have the diamonds on, depending on um, what's going to show through. I'm really hoping it's going to work because I'm quite excited about it as a concept. Um, so that's where I am with that. As I say, I'm still waiting for the glue, so I can't actually start sticking anything. However, today, I've got the diamonds through the post from Smith Speeds. They're always reliable company and um, the quality is really good on there. So you can see I've ordered quite a few colours because I'd used up a lot of the spares on my first picture. And I deliberated whether to pick those off and use them again. But actually, if it works, I want to be able to compare the two for you so you can see the flat version and the 3D version. So I decided to order some more um, colours here and they've just arrived. And when I contacted Smith Speeds to ask if I could mention them in, in my video, they kindly gave me a money off discount code, which I can pass on to you. So that code, if you want to order from Smith Speeds and get 10% off, off, the, um, off your order, the code is SS10. And I'm going to put that in my description below. So you'll, and I'll probably flash it on the screen as well so that you don't miss out because that's, that's great. Um, and in my package as well, I got a freebie. So thank you, Smith Speeds. I got a pen. So um, that's really kind. Right. What I'm going to do next then. Oh, by the way, these are square. I tend to use square. I prefer them. Um, I like the finish better. They sit nicely. I like the click as they go together. <laughs> Little things, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to now kit up ready and fingers crossed my glue might arrive tomorrow 
and we can experiment with that because I've not used the glue before. Um, so I want to try it out for you guys and let you know um, how I get on because I think using the double-sided A4 sheets that I have here somewhere um, will be a bit tricky with the cutout element of the 3D. So fingers crossed, as I say, the glue works a treat. So once I've received it, I'll be adding to the video. All right, see you then. Hello, the glue has arrived. Ta da And it is Aline's Tack It Over and Over. As you can see, I've not opened it yet to have a play. I thought, you know, let's do it all together. Um, so on the back, it says it's the repositional glue, which dries clear and flexible and it's non-toxic, so that's good. A temporary hold for applying and repositioning applique, sequin, ribbon and trims to fabrics. So that's interesting. Um, also works on metal, wood, paper, plastic, glass and stencils, but it's not intended for silk, leather, rayon or polyester, which is fine because we're not dealing with silks. Um, test for best results. Mm. OK, well, we're going to test as we go along. <laughs> Brush a thin coat on embellishment back. Let dry. Blot away excess. Reapply glue as needed. To create glue dot, apply adhesive to wax paper. Let dry. So I think I might experiment with that at another time. Um, peel away and place onto surface. Right, so let's get the packaging off. Um, before I do this, actually, um, because I made the chart myself, as you can see, I've probably got bits here that lift up because when I stick, I stick sellotape on to hold it. Um, now, today, I'm just gluing the sky and the sun for the background piece because this is the first layer, layer one. Um, so I don't need to worry about any other bits apart from this. So I'm just going to quickly PVA. I don't normally, I just normally apply my um, double-sided sheet, but because we're doing it slightly different this time, I just want to make sure that this is held down a little bit. So I've just put a thin layer of PVA on here. So that can be drying as we sort out. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I'll just wipe that off. And as you can see, I've decided to use a glue stick spreader. Um, it does say brush on, but I want to try and get quite an even layer. So um, just put my PVA away. So I thought I'd see what the spreader was like. This is quite a big area that I'm doing, so it's not too intricate. Let's have a look. Okay, so we need to cut the end. And what I think I might do, I've got a little old takeaway pot here. It has probably some mango sauce in or something. Um, <laughs> well washed out. Ooh, I have a number on it, so I've obviously used it before for something. And I'm going to put it in here just so that I can be a bit more... Um, I don't have to be as careful and intricate with the glue. So I think I need to snip off the nib about here. Hopefully my scissors will do it. Oh, yes. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, we've got a, a nice hole there. So I guess that's quite fine for, you know... Maybe when I get to the trees, I might use it through through the nib rather than in a pot. Do I have to shake it? Did it say shake it? Um, no, it didn't say shake. Mm -hmm. By the way, before I get going with this, this is an American product. And you can probably tell from my accent that I'm in the UK. Um, so... There was only one place in the UK that I found that stocked this. Um, 
I'll put the details in the description below. Um, it did take a week to arrive. As if you're following my Facebook page, you'll know that I keep saying the glue hasn't arrived yet. Um, it's finally arrived after a week. Um, but at least it was quicker than getting it from America. So, yeah, you might find that useful if you want to go and find that store in the UK. Right, here we go. It doesn't say shake or anything, so I'm just going to squeeze into the pot. It's quite interesting to see how fine. Oh, yeah, it is quite fine. If you are going to end up doing um, something with detail, it's... Oh, gosh, it's quite splurty. Anyway, I don't know how much I'll need, but let's go with this for now. Let me have a sniff. Not that I re recommend glue sniffing. <laughs> I just want to see how strong the smell was. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> oh dear me. Right, it's not very toxic smelling at all and it is a non-toxic glue, so. I think, do you know, I think I've got far too much here now. Anyway, um, right, I'll start spreading, see how it goes on. And I'm not going to be too precious about covering, for example, the trees. I was actually thinking about it this morning, thinking, um, should I pick all the detail out? And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to because when I start laying the diamonds, it might create an even better 3D effect if um, I put some of them for the tree underneath as well. So I'm literally just going to splodge it on. Didn't say how. Oh, and another thing is. Will it, um, will it blur my symbols? Because I've printed it out on my home printer. It doesn't look like they're running though. And as you can see, I'm not being precious with it. I'm literally just spreading it about. Gosh, I've put far too much in here. It really does spread very easily. And it's going on white, but it said it dries clear. So that's, I guess, when you can, when it goes tacky for the diamonds to be able to be applied. Do this side. Trying to get it fairly even. It's very quick to apply with a glue spreader, so I would recommend using a spreader. What I'm thinking is I'd, I want plenty on, but I don't want it to raised up. What's that there? Get that off. I don't know. Bit of a... Bit of a... Mm. I don't know, maybe that was in the glue, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll put it on there. Now, it does go clear quite quickly, so I now can't remember where I've been. Anyway, I'll do another quick. As it said, I can reapply if I've missed any areas. Now, because I've printed on a sort of a thickish paper, 120 GSM, it is bowing a little bit. I'm hoping that will flatten out um, as it dries or when the diamonds are applied. We'll see. I just need to see the light and see if I've missed any areas because it's got sort of a sheen on it. I think I've got everywhere. So we'll see if I need to put another layer on that. Um, I'll leave it to dry for about 10 minutes and then I'll come back. So I'll see you then. Hello. Right, that wasn't even 10 minutes, but it looks like it's dried quite a bit. Now, if you listen, it is tacky but it's not really sticky. I'm just going to try and apply one of the, um, or a couple of the um, zeros and see if it sticks. Yes, they are now. Yeah, I 
think I might apply another layer just to see if I can get it a bit tackier than that. Um, I am a bit worried that my paper might warp a bit more, but let's have a play and see. I can always print off another one if it goes wrong. That's the beauty of making your own chart. You can experiment a little bit. And you know, if you don't experiment, you don't learn. You stay a bit stagnant. So I'm all about experimenting and trying new things, as you can probably tell from my videos. Right, I'm going to do another layer. Let's see. Maybe I spread it a, th a bit too thinly last time, so I'm going to leave it a bit more. A bit denser. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. I just don't want any ridges in it. That's what I'm a bit cautious about. Right, so that's that half done. As you can see here, I've got, um, it, it is a bit more thicker. Because if you can make glue dots with it, then it means it obviously keeps its um, its shape once it's applied. So little bits down here. so I can remove those bits really. As I say, it doesn't matter if they're tacky because the, the next layer is going to cover that anyway. Right, okay, I'll leave that again and come back to you once it's dry. Hello. Right, so I think we're all dry now and it didn't make the warping any worse. I think there's a bit here and a bit here. Okay, now I don't think it's too bad. So if you can see, there's a sort of a sheen on. So you can definitely see where the glue has been applied. And um, yeah, it's definitely tackier than it was. So I'm going to start applying. I'm going to go in that direction, I think, so that um, I'm just going to pop a few on for you to see. It's definitely not as tacky as if it was on a canvas. And I wonder if that's why um, on a canvas, it's like a fabric, whereas this is a thick paper. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to, you can see it's Tacky enough to make the noise as I apply it. So um, my next concern, I guess, is that the weight of the diamonds will... See, there's just odd little bits where that's not taking. Hmm, let's try that again. No, there's definitely... I'll pop it down and... Keep my eye on that bit. Um, yeah, sorry. So my next concern is that the weight of the diamonds um, will be too much to take once it's vertical. Look, there's just these odd little bits that are causing me a bit of concern. I'm in two minds whether to keep my PVA out and if it's not taking very well to stick them down with that. We'll see. Um, 
I'm just going to keep going so that you can see a bit more of whether they stick well enough. Mm. Yeah, they do stick eventually. Maybe it's just... Right, I'll do a little press down and lift it up. And... Yeah, so they're definitely staying on. I'll give it a good whack. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine, actually. And like I say, if there's some that are really... Alexa made a funny noise then, and I didn't say that. Um, if there's any that come off, then I think I would... Hmm, it's just the odd little bit. It's very strange, and they do move around like these two are not... I'm going to keep my eye on it and report back to you. So I'll continue, because you don't need to see me do um, all of them. I'll continue and then once I get a bit further on, I'll report back as to how it's gone. OK, I'll see you then. Hello, so as you can see, I've done a few more. Um, they're still sticking. I'm getting the odd one or two that have the issue of um, not staying on. So I'm cracking on with it and overall I'm happy with it because even if they don't stay on straight away, I'm just placing them on and leaving them and they are holding. So as you can see, the majority are doing it. Um, I don't really understand why the odd one isn't. Maybe, do you think the glue could maybe not be dry enough yet? See, this one isn't. Anyway, it's done it now. Um, I don't know. don't know the answer, but I'm happy enough to carry on with it because the majority are, and once it's down, it's staying down. Um, so... I think it's I think it's good and it definitely does work on paper. I think it would probably work better on canvas, um, but who knows? Because I don't use canvas when I'm making my own charts. Um, and they're definitely repositional, uh, repositional, which is what you want when you're doing this. Because if you don't get them exactly right, you want to be able to. Um, just squeeze them up a bit or look, you see that they don't once they're on, look, I can skirt that around quite a lot um, see so they're definitely movable even if they stick straight away um, I am wondering as well whether to order just for experiment's sake, a slow drying permanent glue to see what that would be like. Um, not because I've a particular issue with this, just because I like to experiment, as I say. You can easily stagnate if you just do the same things over and over again. And um, if you can't experiment and pass ideas on to other people, then um, that's what I like to be able to offer. So, as you can see, the majority are sticking absolutely perfectly. It's a bit too soon. So I would still recommend this glue. Okay, so I'm just going to do the I code in this bit. It does feel like the same finish of a canvas bought diamond painting. There. 
Right, so I'll lift it up again and show you. There's no, no issue with the ones that didn't stick straight away, so I think it's fine. Okay, I will continue again. Um, I'll probably show you once I've done a couple of slightly warped bits. They are um, still a little bit lifted off, but um, I think once the weight of the diamonds are on, it'll flatten it. Anyway, I'll show you that bit um, when I get there. Bye for now. Hello. So as you can see, I'm a bit further along now. They're still sticking. I've actually got myself one of the release papers from an old kit, just to keep my arm from sticking all the time. Um, and what I'm doing now, I'm going to start on the N code. Now, because the scales have got a few of the ends in and I don't want to waste any of my diamonds I'm going to just lay layer two on the top get it into the right place um, and this is just to make sure that I don't put any ends underneath where you're not going to see them anyway and it just wastes the diamonds it also shows where there are little gaps here and that was because, although they're part of the tree, they were so intricate to cut out that it doesn't matter if they're on the lower level. So I will be going around and filling all of the gaps that are not um, completed on level two. So I'm just going to do these end codes around here. Um, and like I say, I just need to make sure that we can see which ones I need to do. So I'm going to put them through here because they are on layer one. Now you see layer two, I don't need to do those with. Did that fly off then? There we go. Um, and I'll only have to do this really around um, this part of it because um, I'll be filling in. It's just around the scales. Following that line there. So I've got that line now and I know that that's okay to leave anything beyond there. Um, Although I will have to do these bits, won't I? So let's put them in here. So well, that will give me that line. And then here. Oh, I've got my release tape on. I'll do that bit later. So I can now lift this up again somewhere safe and then I can continue up the ways knowing that um, these ones are going to be covered with the next layer. All right so I'll continue on. Hello. Okay so this is layer one complete um, as you can see. Um, I have to admit, it was a lot fiddlier than what I thought it would be, this layer. Um, but that's because of all of the spindly trees. I had to keep laying it on top to make sure that I had um, no gaps on the bottom layer. So, yeah, that surprised me. Then I was stuck down and ready for me to start on the level two. So, just get my layers right here. Um, so I'm going to now lay it over the top so you can see. There we are. Um, so now I'm going to glue the trees. So I'll put level one aside. I'm being a bit careful with it because they're quite delicate. Um, and what I think I'll do, I'm going to put some kitchen roll behind and then I can spread the glue out without being worried about it sticking anywhere. 
Um, so that's my next stage. Roll at the back there. Okay, get my bit of glue from earlier. I'm just going to check what this is like. Oh yeah, it's not dried up or anything, so I think I'll be okay just to add straight into there. Now, because um, Because it's quite spindly, I want to make sure I get a good layer of glue on this. Because, um, like I say, the uh, layer one needed a double coat. I don't want this paper to warp though, so I'm still going to do a um, fairly thin coat, but I might do a couple of them. Just want to make sure I get every little corner on it. It is quite delicate, as you can see. Um, sorry, I should have put my reading glasses back on. It's better. See what I'm doing. And I'm going up to the hedge line on this layer. So, up through her hair. It is really easy to spread this glue. Um, so I think I would recommend a glue spreader rather than a brush, but have a go, see what you think. Oops, just bent that a little bit, could have done without doing that. So again, let's get it nice layer on there as even as I can. It'll be a relief to get these trees done because it is the most intricate part of the whole design. And I decided that instead of sticking it onto the layer one and then putting the diamonds on, I'm going to put the diamonds on and then um, place it onto the layer one. Right, nearly there for coat one. I think I'm going to remove the um, kitchen roll. I just don't want that. layer there that's should have done that with a bit of PVA again. It's okay. Right. So I'm just going to let that dry. See if I need to apply another layer. I probably will. Um, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so here we are. We've now got two coats of glue on and a fresh um, couple of 
kitchen roll behind just so that I can keep the glue off my table. I'm not quite sure if um, it would stain this, so I did give it a bit of a wash down. Um, so we're all ready to start applying the diamonds again. So these delicate bits, I'm going to see how I feel once I've put them on. Um, and if I feel that they're going to be too weighty, I will leave them until I've put the second layer um, on top of the first layer. So it's another experiment for this layer, I'm afraid. Um, anyway, I'll start diamond painting and I'll come back to you once the branches are all done. Hi everyone. Okay, bit of an update. As you can see, I've progressed a bit now since um, I last recorded. And I have to say, it's been... I very nearly gave up. You need the patience of a saint. <laughs> now, um, what I'm worried about is this is the most intricate part of the whole design. And um, what I was finding was some of the bits were coming off. I'm a bit worried that once it's all dried, they just all fall off. Um, at one point, I even experimented with PVA and that was no good at all. I put a little bit of PVA on, but of course you need the tackiness to pull it off your um, stick, your implement. So I've gone back to the tacky glue. I am happy with the tacky glue, it does work, but what I'm finding is that in some areas it seems to be drying um, and not staying that tacky. So what I've decided to do, and I've been trying it for a little bit now, is I've put a teeny bit of the wet glue on the end of my glue stick. And so if some of them won't stick, I'm dabbing them in to spread the glue on. Because it's so intricate around here, I can't get my glue stick in. So I'm not sure about on here with this code here. I'm not sure if any will stick um, or not so if they don't I'll be able to show you at some point but as you can see some of them are some as you put the next one in move and knock off the other colours so it has been an absolute trial I would recommend um, and I do have a lot of patience so it's not that I'm an impatient person. Right, so here's one that won't stick here. So I'm going to dab it in the glue like this. Did you see that? So that, that diamond now has a blob of glue on the back. And if you look here, I'm just going to sort of wipe it across and then stick it on the right code. And that's just so that you see that one's now come off and this is what I've been dealing with all the way along so I now have to grab this one and stick it back on oh and that's now knocked this one off So it has been quite frustrating. But I'm persevering. I really like the look of it. So I'm sure it'll all be worth it in the end. Gosh, I hope so. Um, I'll just finish this little bit on camera. So if you do decide to have a go at this, I would choose a simpler pattern, number one, which doesn't have such intricate detail on it, um, especially on your first one trying it. Secondly, I would definitely get the tacky glue, but just be aware that you're going to have to keep adding a bit more and a bit more to it. Um, We'll see, next, the next layer is going to be the peacock layer, so because it's more solid, we'll be able to test it a bit further as well. So anyway, I just wanted to update with that. 
and now I'll continue to finish this. Hello, right, I'm at the point where I have now finished the diamond painting, I've persisted with it um, and every time I lift it sometimes they ping off so um, anyway I'm, I've got as far as I can with it so what I'm going to do now is I've undenied whether to start layering it and I've decided to because I need to test whether this is actually going to work before I diamond paint every layer and then put it together. But this is so delicate that I think I'm going to have to lay it, layer it onto layer one and then keep it separately somewhere because every time I knock this they ping off again. You can tell by my voice probably that I'm just fed up with it. <laughs> so anyway, um, what I've got to do the layering is um, some mammoth tape, which as you can see has quite a thickness to it. Um, and this is to put on the, the main areas. And I've got some large decoupage pads and I've got some smaller decoupage, decoupage pads. Um, they're quite a similar um, depth. These seem to be quite a bit bigger. So I'll see, I might not even use these. Um, we'll see as we go on. So as layer one, oh, and also, sorry, I did make some glue dots with the tacky glue so they are tacky and I made these to go under those branches because I was going to cut these up into smaller chunks but actually I don't want to be able to see those anywhere through the branches so I'm going to try this um, and hopefully it'll have a better finish to it okay so I'll get layer one here we are and as you can see with layer one, I've had no problem whatsoever with these coming off. So I think it's just because layer two is so spindly. Right, I'll try and get my camera to be more distanced. Just lift it up a bit so you can get more of an overview. Um, now I can't actually see my camera so I'm, I'll better stand up alright so I'm going to put some of the tape in this corner in this corner um, and as I said that's only to give it a bit more strength rather than the smaller pads so I'm going to stick one here the same the other side. Oh, I do hope this works. I'm feeling a little bit perturbed by what's happened with that layer two today. trying to make sure that you won't be able to see any of the pads once layer two is on the top. And hopefully this will be deep enough to give it a good definition. So got those sides. Now these are quite narrow. Um, hmm. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to cut a strip like this and then cut this in half if I can. Oh, it is actually quite strong. It's got like um, a mesh. Can you see that? Anyway, let's see if I can cut through. if 
I use the ends of the scissors, but of course my scissors stick to the tape. Hmm. Last bit, perfect. Okay, so pop this. Let's turn the nice end that way around. Down here. what you want because you want it to have a strong hold that's that is the point <laughs> so I'm going to put this tape on a bit like a frame Because as the layers, hopefully, if it works, we'll be layering it to a depth of six. So as the layers sit, we want it to make sure it's sturdy enough underneath on the base layer. So, let's get to the end a bit. Um, Because um, the top bit we needed to cut thin so that you couldn't see it underneath, this is all quite solid so we're okay to do it quite patchy in here. And then I'm going to do Strip along the bottom. I bought this tape on Amazon. It was about two pounds fifty a roll. So um, fair price, I would say. I might have to buy another one. We'll see how we get on. So I'm putting the tape to support layer two. So I just need a bit more up here for support. And I think that will be enough. So I'm going to do it quite high up. Either side. And then maybe a bit here as well. Okay, so there we have that. Right, I'll just move those pads and these glue dots. We don't quite need the glue dots yet. So as I say, I'm going to carefully lay layer two on the top of this. Now, I'll take off the... the top layer of this tape to a certain degree. I'm, I'm not going to remove it all because I want to give myself a bit of play. So you can see I've just moved like the tags. With the smaller ones I'll take it all off. I don't know if I'm on camera, sorry about that. There we go. Just 
one too. Might do this one as a tag as well. And that just gives you a little bit more play with it. If you've ever done um, 3D decoupage with card making or making pictures, normally it's just card. Um, Whereas with the diamond painting, you've got the weight of the diamonds and that's what I'm trying to get a bit of support for. Um, as I say, I've not done it before, so it's a bit of an experiment whether it even works. to go up from the top or from the bottom. Where did that ping from? Oh dear, I'm a bit nervous about this, I have to say. I really want it to work. Oh dear me, it's so delicate this. And I'm worried that if I get it, I'm worried that if I get it stuck on these pads and it's not in the right place, that I'm going to have an issue. So let's try and line it up this way. Hopefully there's a bit of play in it. Pulling the tabs off. Oh, I created one. That's the one. Right. And then what I need to do now, it's looking good actually. Whew. It's a bit of a relief. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, put some of these glue dots underneath the branches to try and raise those up a bit more. So I'm just going to turn it round so I can see a bit easier. It's not as 3D as I thought, but... Um, under there. 
just noticed I've got some bits and bobs right. I'm just going to have to do a bit of, can you see that? Bring it down a bit more. Some of the diamonds have popped off. Can you see there, there. So I'll have to add some more on. It's very, very delicate, but I think this is the um, going to be the trickiest layer. Right, I think I might use my tweezers to do this. So I'm just picking off the glue dots that I made, and I literally just squeezed some of the um, Eileen's glue. And I'm just going to pop that there, and that will support branch. See? Try and pop that into the cover of you. There we are. Um, so I'm just lifting these up a little bit. I'm trying to be careful because they will pop off. <laughs> Come on, stuck to the glue dots. <laughs> hmm. See there? This is because the glue is tacky glue, but it doesn't dry permanent. So I might end up trying to find a glue that stays tacky, but dries solid. If I'm going to do another one of these. And also... Um, I wouldn't do one as intricate as this. Anyway, that's that's working. I hope you can see that okay. Um, supporting that might be a bit big actually let's get some smaller ones I'll put this somewhere because it's not wanting to leave me now let's pop it in that one with the glue for doing this because you can make all sorts of different sizes of glue dots which is great for projects where you just want a bit of flexibility and they're holding the shape really well right I'm going to continue and then um, I'll show you once everything's supported Hello. Right, I've had a bit of thinking time. I've left this alone for a couple of days. I thought it might beat me, but um, no, I'm pursuing. Um, what's happening is when the branches are 3D and lifted from the, the bottom, I don't know if you can see this, I'll lift it a bit closer, but for example here, um, on this branch here because it's not covered and when I lift it up um, you can see the codes underneath that layer so it looks a bit ugly and a bit sort of unfinished so what I've decided to do I've decided to use a different very dark green colour so I've got number 890 here 
and I'm going to do underneath the trees with this. Um, so I'm just going to open the packet. Right, and I might not do them all. I don't want to waste diamonds. I might just do the outside and see how it looks and then fill any gaps in. Now I'm also now not sure if this is still tacky with the glue. So I'm just going to try it. No. Right, so what I'll have to do, I'm going to get a bit of the tacky glue on the end of my glue stick from my little pot that I started with. So I'm still using this same squirt of glue and it stayed wet. So I'm just going to put a bit on the end of my glue stick, not too much because as it dries it won't then stay on the diamonds. And I'm just going to start going round. So little, just a little press in the glue. And then I might actually get my tweezers and lift this up a little bit. I have to be gentle because it is quite stuck down on the sides with all of that tape I put on. Right, and when, I forgot, when I place the first one down, I'm just going to shuffle it along a bit to try and get a bit of glue on the next square instead of doing each individual one see if it works. Yep. And I'll put a bit on the, so a little bit of glue on this one. And I decided on a very dark colour so that it can look a little bit like shadows of the tree. Because it's going to be raised Hopefully it will add a bit more depth to the overall look at the end. I'm not going to do this on, and if any fall off, I'm keeping them because I'll need to reapply these branches. As um, I explained earlier in the video, they are tending to lift a bit. I have been testing more of um, Aline's glue and seeing if I can get a higher, faster stick. Um, so if they fall off these branches, I am going to use sorry, look, the fast grab, but I'm only going to do it in very small quantities because once it dries, it loses its stick, it loses its tackiness. So, there's a lot of experimentation in this project, but like a lot of these are now falling off and I'm just gathering them up. Because I, I don't want to um, waste them. Right, so that area is now done with the darker colour, so I'll move on up to this one. And all I've got is my little glue stick, I just put my diamonds on it and pull them off. Oops. As this glue dries it gets a little bit more stuck on there, but as you can see, you can still grab some. So we'll do that here. If it pulls any up off the base layer, just stick it down again. So as you can probably determine, it isn't as fast as a usual kit. It is quite slow going. However, oh, that one didn't go down. Um, I still think it's going to be worth it, little Miss Optimistic. Um, so I'm going to persevere. And then 
I will let you know. But as I said earlier in my video, you don't have to do one as complicated as what I've started with. I think I've been a little bit um, ambitious with this. And if it was just one or two layers that didn't have all of these teeny weeny little bits on them, I think you'd be absolutely fine. As I say, I've just made it a little bit tricky. <laughs> As a first experiment, right, stick that down again. Right, so I'm going to continue. I'll just lift that up and so you can see some of the, um, some of those have come off. So I'll reapply those. But hopefully you'll see here now that, oh, I think I might need to apply one just there but at least now there are no codes underneath to distract from the main design. So that will definitely be better. Just pop this one on. So you can see it's starting to stick to the glue stick quite a bit now, but it will come off. Just, there we go. Right, where did I see? there in that corner. It's down there. More diamonds fell off there. Okay, right, I'm going to progress with this again. I'm going to stick these darker diamonds underneath and I'm going to replace any of the ones that fall off and at that point I will be back to you. Bye for now. Hello, welcome back. As you can see I've got a blank desk in front of me. I wanted to prepare you to be shocked. <laughs> Here we have the picture that I've been working on and that you've been watching. Now, as we left it, I had um, the trees diamond painted. Well, the tack over and over, Helene's glue didn't really work out for this. Um, I've still got the, the bottom part done, as you can see. I've ended up having to cut around, I might just have to zoom my camera out, sorry to wiggle it a bit. Um, I've ended up cutting around the trees here and removing it. And as you can see, I no longer have any diamonds on. I've taken them all off. I've kept as many as I can. Um, so at the moment, I've got layer one, with layer two over the top, it's just a lost one there, um, with, without the trees in. So you can see that that is actually layer two there, as is this here, because it was so well stuck down that I couldn't actually lift this up again. So I thought, okay, I'll cut the trees out. I need to be able to get into the background to finish off these shaded areas that I started and as I was doing that the diamonds the blue ones the turquoise ones kept pinging off so I thought right keep resilient don't give up because I very nearly did and um, I ordered another pack of the Aline's glue I've tested them all out and Really, the only one that I particularly liked was the fast grab tacky glue. However, and it is a permanent glue, because it's so thick and so white, I wouldn't be able to cover this and then apply the diamonds because I wouldn't be able to see the codes. So I've had my thinking cap on. I am going to continue applying the the bottom bits with the fast tacky grab glue on the end of a piece of card or something. So instead of spreading it all out, I'm going to have to individually put them on and I'm only going to do around the outside. And by doing that, I'm hoping it will hold these ones firmer because as you saw in my last video, these were starting to pop off as well. And I think it's something to do with perhaps the tack it over and over is for a fabric. So on canvas, it may well work, but on card, it's having an issue. It's not keeping them. I mean, these are 
pretty solid on. I don't want to move them too much. But I think by using the fast grab glue on the background, it will keep those in place because I'm also going to do around the edge here. In the meantime, I've thought about what on earth I can do about this. And what I've decided to do is go back to my double sided um, sheets, but perhaps, sorry if you can hear me crinkling, perhaps instead of using big sheets, I'm going to cut out, I'm thinking of drawing around this little area for example, putting it underneath, drawing around, cutting that out and placing it on there. Um, and what I realised with cutting this off was that actually it doesn't need to be one piece. So if I struggle, what I could do is cut these all out individually and place them on um, the glue dots that I made. Because that is one thing that the Tacket Over and Over has given me is the ability to make glue dots. So I will be sticking with that. They're great. Um, so that's where I'm up to. It, it did take quite a while to um, harvest all of these back off again. Like I say, I saved as many as I could. Some were pinging all over the place and on the carpet. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there. So, yeah, it's been a, a, a trial, to be fair. It has been a trial, but I'm persevering. I'm keeping going and um, I'll catch up with you a bit later. Bye for now. Hello. Okay, here we go with the um, sticky bit for the trees again. <laughs> so what I'm doing, this is the double-sided um, sheet here, cut from an A4 sheet. I'm going to put it underneath and what I'm thinking is that is going to be very difficult to cut out and because I'm not sure if my craft knife will be great um, with the stickiness underneath this layer I'm thinking I'm going to do it piece by piece it's going to be time consuming but you know as long as we make progress and get somewhere then that will be good I'm just getting my green pen um, make sure it's working okay so I think the first piece I'm going to do is probably I'm just looking here I think I might even just do this bit here so I'm going to draw around this hence why I'm using a green pen right so should I do any more of it um, do you know I'm not going to I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to fill in, see what happened here, is that goes like that and then I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. Okay, then I'm going to use my scissors for this bit. In fact, should I try, I might try my craft knife and see, I've got it here, just to see if it would go through. We don't have to be extremely precise with this because um, as long as you get a bit of tack on, it's fine. So I wonder if that means that I would be able to cut out those areas like this for example right so here's our shape have a little gosh have a little look at that there okay that's where I'm going to apply the first bit okay I'm a bit nervous because there's been just so many things go wrong with this um project. 
Let's have a go. We don't have a go, we're not going to learn, and we've learned a lot so far. Okay, that's the tacky back, so I'm going to remove that and place this here to cover there. Right, area one. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even on camera there. I'm sorry about that. Okay, area one. So next going to use the same sheet. don't want to waste any if I can help it. I am a bit... <laughs> mm. No, that's not going to work that well. need to make sure I've got it right. Do you know... So, we'll just carry on down this line. Okay. So again, I'm going to Draw around here. It's good to know that the craft knife works because at the more intricate places, um, we'll be able to cut it out. I didn't think it would go through. Right, and we're not going to do this bit because that is going to be part of layer three. So. We can just join that up there. Right, just have a look at the patterning a minute and say we can finish that here. Right, we don't actually need any of that. I'm going along here and down here. Okay, so this is the bit that I'm going to cut out. And all I'm doing here is looking at that shape and just making sure that um, I cut out that bit so we don't need that bit there. Right, I'll have to go with scissors this time. Just... Yeah, it's actually more fiddly with scissors, so we'll go back to the craft knife. to me while I'm putting out and that's no good for you guys so sorry if I keep going off camera right so that's that little bit just turn it round I think um, once this layer is done the other layers are going to be so much easier than this one. Um, it's all of these spindly trees, which I do love though, so I don't want to, you know, just do it as layer one instead of having them 3D, because I, I did think about that as well, but I really want them to stand out. Just checking that out. Should go through all of these. There he is. Or we say if it's something's worth doing, then it's worth doing properly. <laughs> so. Right, where did my there we go? Safety lid. Okay, so making sure it's the correct way around. That is going to sit there. So yeah, that looks good. thing I'm just a little bit concerned about is that overlap so I'm just going to slightly peel that back a bit okay great okay so we take the backing off I'm 
good old double-sided sticky tape. Oh no, I've taken the wrong side off. Ah, spoke too soon, did I? Yes, I did. Oh, dear me. Oh, <laughs> have to find the right shape now and stick it back on again. Right, let's see that again. What did I do there? Did I turn it? That was that way. Right, so it needed to be the backing. It needed to be the other side, so. And maybe I was right. There we go. Not a problem. <laughs> okay, I think what I need to do is make sure that this bit is correct and the rest will fall into place. As so. Okay, so as you can see, please tell me that was on camera. Oh. As you can see, I'm doing like little jigsaws. And um, with this one, I think what I'll do is do this part separately. So, let me go again. around here. This is still quite tacky from the glue and although it's still tacky it's just not tacky enough to keep the diamonds in place. Um, sorry I was just wondering whether to go up there but no I think I'll just go across here to this part. As you can see, I'm not being that careful with it, really. I'm um, just wondering if I did any of this last time. Whether to bring it down a bit, just in case I want to pop some on. Let's go to here. Yeah, we'll go to there. So again, I'm going to, this one's quite um, bitty, isn't it? So let's go join that up there. I'm going to go across here. What happens here? Let's find it again. All oh, right, yes, that's where this bit was. So we'll go up to there and across and we'll come down here right I think that's the shape we need am I on camera sorry I must keep checking But as I say, I'm not being really precise with it because with this sticky um, sheeting, if it's slightly big, you can just fold it back a little bit, you know. So I think your pen mark would always be bigger rather than smaller. If it is smaller, just add another little bit on. Or maybe you could even glue that little bit if it was too small to add a bit of sheeting to. So I think as long as the majority of it is well stuck down, then um, it would be fine. Oops, that's a bit big. Go across there.
Do you know how I'm surprised how easily this sheet is to cut actually with the craft knife. If I'd realised that before faffing about with glue, I might have uh, <laughs> got a bit further with this now. It's a bit of a relief, I have to tell you. Okay, so shall I do it in one full? Should I do this in one piece or should I split it? I think I'll try it in one piece. Okay, make sure I get the correct back off. No, it's done that again, so. Try a different area. And that's what you find. If it keeps taking the wrong edge off so that it's the wrong side of the tack then just try a different piece that's worked um, and hopefully it'll work for you doing that okay where to start with this I think I'm going to start in a wibbly place here glue on that okay So that's that piece, that's the third piece now that we've got in place. Now what I think I'm going to do is do a little test run before I do all of the um, double sided sticky bits. So I think I'm going to test this bit here. Um, I'll get the diamonds. Because I've fiddled about with this piece it's feeling quite flimsy and you can see in this corner I have a slight rip here as well but that won't matter because once this is in place if I can get my big picture again once this is in place I'm stuck here so you can see this area here the next level will go on the top of this so I'll probably glue that down and the next level will sit um, because I'm not diamond painting this bit, it's not going to be on show. So thankfully, it's not too much of a problem. Um, in fact, I might just glue that down now. And I'm going to use, I'm going to do some quick dry tacky glue. Just pop a little blob. It is so thick this, it's really, oh maybe I took the lid off to test it and didn't cut a hole. Yeah, that's what I did, so I'll just use it from here. No, mm -mm -mm. it's not having it. Did he trial and error? I'll just use this as a little glue glue spatula. There we go. So you can see it's very white, very thick glue. Just pop that down and a bit here too. <laughs> something's gone right <laughs> I'm at that point point of celebrating every little success <laughs> oh, don't you just love crafting I've got a bit of glue on there now okay where was I oh, got a little diamond appeared alright where were we I'm going to Test this little bit. So I've got my colours. Got my colours. Feel all fingers and thumbs today. It's probably because I'm actually quite excited that things are starting to happen. Starting to work a little bit. Get a bit of a blob of wax. Let's have a look. And my own camera. <laughs> okay, 
So just peeling this little part back there. Let's start with those up arrows. What uh, number is that? 943. 943. So some of these, as you can see, because I've taken them off, they still have a bit of tacky glue on them. So you know when you get that static, um, that static and they stick together, it's a bit like this, but they've just got the tacky glue on the back. Um, anyway, it's not an issue. Just thought I'd mention it if you were wondering why they were all sticking together. Ta -da, back to what we know, double-sided sticky tape. Um, is working perfectly, as we know it does. So. Oh, it's such a relief. Such a relief. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but can you see the edge here? Got a little bit of this sticky over the edge of that. It's not an issue. It really isn't an issue. Um, if it was a big piece, I would probably cut it and fold it back, but um, that is not going to be a problem. Just going to get the bottom layer to show you. this area I've actually got the shadow already on as well so that's a good example so when this is put on and it's raised up you can, you'll be able to see that there we go that's what we're aiming for okay right I'm going to leave it there with you guys I'm going to crack on and um, I'll give you an update as soon as I can okay bye for now hello here we are then all ready now. This has taken me about six hours <laughs> to cut out today. So aren't you pleased that you didn't have to sit through that? I'm certainly relieved to have finished getting all of that down. So hooray, I am about to start diamond painting again. So I'm relieved. Fingers crossed it all works and um, we can go on, progress on. So I won't... Um, film me putting the diamonds on. You all know how to do that by now. So I'll see you again once this is finished. Hello, welcome back. Well, as you can see, I have now completed the tree section again using the double-sided sticky tape and I am so much happier with this. So it's time now to put this onto the first layer. So I'll just pop that aside for now and get the layer one, which is here. Okay. So um, I did contemplate maybe redoing this one as well. I've had another look at it. I've stuck a few more that were loose back down again and I've decided not to redo the base unless this does not stick properly. So, during the course, oh, I've just noticed here that I need to put some more in here. I'll do that in a moment. I've just got a few missing. So, let's just get those in before we continue. So, just here, I've missed off a few of the diamonds. So, seven. 80. Won't take me long. Just make sure that they're on before. We pop them on the. Now, actually, I don't think I need them there because that was my line. I measured out what was on level three. Um, so I knew where to come up to and that is why all of this is not done. I'll get my level three and show you. So, so, you 
this is level three with the trees cut out as it goes over the top. And so what I did, I laid it on and thought, okay, I don't need to do those. So I hope you can see that okay. That's where I knew my line stopped. Now, as you can see, when I put this on, the trees are not straight. So that leads to what I'm going to do with this layer before putting it on layer one. I think because I've glued it and then taken them off and then glued it and oh, I think it has warped this bit of the paper a little bit. So when I lay it on the top of layer one, it doesn't lie brilliantly flat. So then you see some of the codes through. I don't know if you can see that. So this is straight and yet it goes off a little bit in areas. Um, so it's kind of like it needs to be um, just wondering actually if, if I put it on into the gap, how bad is it? Yeah, it is off by quite a bit. So my idea is that I am going to, sorry, I'm just reassessing my own mindset here. Oh, I've just noticed there's one missing there. Which I'll have to, yeah, I'm going to divide this layer. I'm going to cut them separately and stick them on individually so that they are absolutely in the right place. Um, so I'm going to get my craft knife and I'm going to see about where is the obvious place. So, for example, I think if I cut here across and I'm going to say down here and have that as one section. That means I'll be able to place this on the pads on top and just manipulate it a little bit. Um, I'm thinking of using this as one section. So again, if I cut to an obvious place, I'm going to cut across here. Across here and then I want to, yeah, I'm going to cut it down here. Separate those. So that's section two. Section three. I'm sure I have a split somewhere. Oh, that was where the, there's a split. Hmm. I think I'll try and do, yep. whether I keep that separate. Yeah, I'm going to go down here. Straight through there. There we go, that's section three. Then, I'm going to do section four here. That seems like a natural split there. And here, and then maybe another split for these. Hmm. 
seems obvious to do it here really. So, right, I'll leave it like that, but I may well split this one into. Do you know I'm going to? I'm going to split it off anyway into that little section there. Right, so they are all my sections. Right. Okay, and to put them all on, if you remember, way back, <laughs> I made the glue dots. These are the ones I took off the back when I redid the trees, but they're still tacky, as you can see, so I'm going to be able to reuse those. I might have to make some more because I want quite a few on to make it really good and sturdy. Um, but now that I've got it into sections, it's actually going to be a lot easier to do that. Okay, so I'll put that aside. I'll grab layer one. And let's just hold breath that these stay on because these are still my glued diamonds. And I looked at it and I ummed and ahed and I thought, do I remove them all? Should we just continue? I don't know if that one's right. No, it isn't. I thought that looked a bit strange having a blue in a... Because they moved a little bit, I think. Um, some of them in, you know, like here. I do need to check that they are all complete before I go any further after putting them on top. I think that one might be went there. So we'll make sure. Right, so I will be putting layer one here. I'm making sure it is in the right place. And by doing that, it means that I no longer have to worry. I'm just looking at that, I think. That was supposed to be a gap, so that has lifted off somewhere. Got a hair there. No, that one's lifted off, okay. See if that will go back on. So it's glued a hair, but it hasn't glued the diamond on very well. Oh, oh this gluing business is just right. I'll just have to do a fast grab for this one diamond. Yeah. I'm worried that that splurges out. In fact, let's get the let's get a bit of the fast grab. Now, as um, you know, I'm not a massive fan of using this on diamond paintings, but at this point, um, I can't really just apply a teeny weeny bit of. Well, I suppose I could actually. If this doesn't stick, I will. I will go back to double-sided sticky and put a teeny weeny piece on. Because what I don't want to do is as I build up the layers, I don't want... Um, where to put that there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want all of the diamonds to start falling off because that would be a disaster. once you start layering up, you know. Okay, I'm just going to leave that section for a little bit and allow that to dry. So let's have a look at this section. Now I've also got an issue here because I've got a diamond missing there. Right, I'm going to turn off the recording 
I'm going to have another look at what might be missing because I can see a gap underneath and um, I'll make that right before I show you how I'm going to layer it. Back soon. Hello. Right, I've now got the background um, sorted with the diamonds that fell off. I've also, you might be able to see if you look closely, put sort of little bits of glue on the edges where they tended to keep slipping. So I'll keep my eye on that, but that was just a, a bit of extra hold. Right, so where were we? We were here with this piece. Um, so just checking that right. So what I'm going to do is put some glue dots on the back. Um, I'm going to use the biggest ones I've made. I want it quite well raised off the top and see what that looks like because um, I am conscious, I'm not sticking now, um, I am conscious that um, the, if it is too raised you'll see the codes underneath. That's why I did start doing a background colour and then I abandoned that idea as well. Um, my tweezers for this I think. So I'm just sticking some glue dots on in the places where it will need to be well supported. I think um, depending on what the height ends up looking like I may well put one on top of another in places as well. So it's just really to make sure it can't be seen from the front but putting enough on to support the piece. Um, I think I'll need smaller ones for there because as I say we don't want to see we don't want to see them from the front. Okay and then I'll put a really diddy one here just to help stick that um, now when they're diddy and thin means they're not as high either. So we'll see in a minute. I'm just going to put a teeny one. In fact, I might roll this one. See if I can get it long and thin to pop on there. Right, I'm going to leave that and see if it's supported enough without. Okay, so next I line up where I think it looks right. Press down. And you'll probably be able to see now with the... Um, with not having them all together, the whole sheet, just affords a little bit more manipulation into place. Okay, so that is now balanced on top. I'm just going to check if it will stay. Needed to put it vertically to make sure that that didn't fall off. It does feel a little precarious. Um, hmm. I might just put another one here. Got two. Don't need two. So, I don't know why I've got a diamond there. Take that off. Okay, it's moved. I 
them down a little bit more firmly. Now that it's in position. Okay, let's try the next piece. to support it. I have made some more glue dots as well which are drying at the moment. With doing it separately I felt that it would need some more support. So it's just judging where you think um, the best place would be to help lift. Could need one there. Oops. That one. Might need to here and that's what was good about the tacky glue if you remember I could make different size glue dots I have tried to make really high ones in fact I might need a little bit. I have tried to make um, different sized ones for height however it seems to um, flatten as it dries general placing gently push down into place you don't have to be the same level either if if like a little bit further um, a bit higher etc that's fine now what I'm also thinking is once they're in place I may well sellotape this back to um, give it a bit more strength at the bottom here we'll see okay so that's that level down happy happy um, I'm just going to lift this so you might be able to get a better view of the 3D effect. Can you see that here they are lifted? I don't know if, you, if the camera will pick that out very well. But um, it is working, which is lovely. Right, so I'm going to continue popping those down in exactly the same way and then I will decide what to do about the strength of the bottom bit after then. Make sure they don't keep popping up like that. Okay, see you a bit soon. Hello. Okay, so now you can see that I've put all of the pads and glue dots on. So hopefully you can see the 3D effect there on the trees. Um, and also I wanted to show you an old card making trick. So I've left a little bit of an area at the top here. You might be able to see that there. And that is slightly overlapping. And that's because what we do is flatten some pieces to make it more 3D. So I'm going to take a scrappy bit of sticky back plastic that I used to cut out the trees. And I'll just take an area doesn't really matter how big. You might think, oh, that's going to be too big for this. But what the trick is, is you want to take the backing off and then take the sticky bit off 
I find this is the easiest way that I um, could do it while card making. So I'm trying to get off the all of the stick. There we go, so you can see there's the sticky bit and then I'm going to fold it over and make, make it a shape because it doesn't need to be completely flat. You want a little bit of dimension to it. And then I'm going to lift this gently, might be need to be a bit smaller. Okay, pop it onto the canvas paper and manipulate that into place. So you can see now we've got a lower part and higher parts. So you see, and that just means with trees, because they're not all flat, um, it means that they look more effective, more realistic as it were. So I'm going to do that in a couple of places. So cut another piece off. I think I'm going to stick this here just to hold that a bit better. So again, taking the backing off. Just getting it off the, this is the trickiest bit, getting it off the paper, folding it over. Okay, gently lift the area. Oh, need it a bit smaller. Place on and push down. Right, so if you have a little look at your design and see where you would place things, I think over here you could do with a little bit. And it's a way of using your scrap. So I think it comes from card making. I keep all sorts of little bits and bobs. You never know when they're going to come in useful. Fold it over. Again, don't have to be particularly um, careful with it and then stick down. Now I've also got that bit here. So, okay, so I might just try and cut a thin strip just to secure it a bit better. Finally, feel like I'm moving forward this, with this project, and I'm still going to call it an experiment <laughs> at this stage. But I'm feeling a lot more positive about it working. Right, where was that bit here? So I'm just going to place that under there. Keep that bit intact. There. Okay. So, level one and two complete. Yay! So, next time we'll start on layer three. I'll see you then.